The Matrix Resurrection Heavy Spoiler Trailer Breakdown. Oh, J Rock is here, and the trailer is here. Uh, if you haven't seen J Rock's reaction to the um, Matrix Resurrection trailer, make sure you go and check it out. Um, but a lot of questions from that trailer. What's going on? Why is Neo back in the Matrix? How did he get back? How the hell is Trinity still alive? What the hell happened to Morpheus? Okay, a lot of questions need to be answered. Come on back and let's do the damn thing. Hi, Lee. J Rock has come back to you too. You too. What is happening, any and any, with the millions? <laughs> And millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world. J-Rock is here. Oh, and we're about to check out this trailer breakdown from Heavy Spoilers. They're about to go into the trailer and try to, excuse me, help answer some questions about what we just saw with the Matrix Resurrection trailer. A lot of questions that we have to have answered, all right? The war is over, right, between man and machines, or is it? Did the machine put Neo back into the Matrix? Is his body still out there? Is he still the one? What is going on? All right? This is going to be, uh, this Matrix drops in December, a few days before Christmas. And I will be checking this thing out. I think it drops on HBO Max as well. So you rest sure about your bottom dollar. J-Rock will be watching this movie. All right? Let's check it out. But first, any reaction requests that you might have or something you want J-Rock to react to, drop it down in the comment section below. If that's your request, I give you a shout out right here on the Great Ones channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the Great Ones channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button. All right, J-Rock is dropping this fresh content for you, the millions of his fans all over the world. All right, the more you hit that like button, the more you let me know that you're enjoying what J-Rock is doing. All right, and if you're not subscribed to the Great Ones channel, why not? What are you waiting for, okay? Like, why? You want to miss this electrifying content from the most electrifying YouTuber in all of youtube tainment? I don't think so. So you go ahead and you hit that subscribe button. Do it now. All right, and let's check this thing out. Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, a.k.a. The One Out of Ten Looks Wise. And in this video, we're breaking down The Matrix for Resurrections. Now, normally when a film drops like this, I do a big trailer breakdown, but I thought I'd change things up and do a video discussing way more about the movie than what I typically tend to touch upon that gives context to this first look. The trailer was actually shown at CinemaCon, and I was lucky enough to get a lot of info on it sent in advance on not only the teaser, but also what's going to be happening in the film. So, big big breakdown, and in this video we'll be going over the story in general, what insiders have said about the film, and also some of the easter eggs and things that you missed from the teaser. What if I told you that there will be heavy spoilers, as some of these things might ruin a lot of the big reveals. If you don't want anything spoiled, then I recommend that you unplug, but if you stick around, then it is your purpose to subscribe. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's enter the Matrix. Okay, so over the last couple of days, we've had a lot of teasers towards the film. Though a blue and red pill video dropped on Tuesday that was announcing when the trailer was coming, if you visited the website, it was possible to get two teasers that hinted towards what's coming in the film. These first looks had Yaya Abdul-Mateen playing a young version of Morpheus, and he gave a similar speech to what he did in the first Matrix when he discussed reality and how we must question everything around us. He brought up the time which was 627, and this random number could actually be a nod to Luke 627 from the Bible. If that's the case, then it refers to the passage about how you should turn the other cheek, and it is rumored that the humans and machines are actually working together in the film. We do see at one point Morpheus touching a mirror, and this bends and twists much like the mirror scene in the first film. Right. This is later reflected eh, in another part when a gun comes out of it from the other side, making me think that mirrors are indeed portals and jump points within the Matrix. The phrase through the looking glass was used heavily in the first film, and the idea of mirrors is something that pops up throughout the entire trailer. The phrase through the looking glass actually pulls from the book Alice in Wonderland, and this shows up at one point when Neo visits a bookstore. I think it's really interesting how the steam and water droplets on the mirror look like the famous green coating that was everyone's screensaver in 1999, and I believe that this has been done on purpose to hint towards their importance. Now, now a lot of people are confused over the timeline and how Morpheus is younger when both Trinity and Neo are actually the same age. Take this with a big grain of salt, but according to rumors surrounding the film, the real Morpheus died of old age, and when the Matrix was rebooted, a bootleg copy was brought in. Mm. Similar to the characters that we see in the film, 
He will be someone who questions his own reality, and he will have to come to grips with being built into the simulation. In the real world, Niobe is apparently still alive, and she will have taken Morpheus' place as the leader of humanity. At one point in the film, he will fight Neo in a dojo that is heavily riffing upon the scene in the first film. However, Neo will be far more powerful and brutal than what we saw him doing in that movie. Of course. I think it's super smart by the creators to call back to moments like this, as they are of course iconic, and remind us exactly Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me! In the first place. Now as for Neo, he will attend a lot of therapy sessions throughout the movie, and will learn that he actually erased his own memory, but glimpses of this will come to him through the form of flashbacks. He will have two looks in the film, namely his quote-unquote John Wick one, and also the completely shaven one that pops up in the pods. This would have been the perfect time for me to drop a Manscaped ad that I was actually going to do this week, but I messed up and didn't get it done on time, so I'm sorry if you guys are watching this. Now, I will, I will link my code in the description below if people want to check it out, as there's some great discounts. Now, moving on, Neo has created a fake life for himself that he sedates with blue pills, which of course calls back to the first film, as it was in that that we saw these led someone away from escaping the Matrix. According to the leaks, Neo is actually a game developer that worked on a trilogy of games for Warner Brothers, and I'm not kidding, they're meant to be called The Matrix. Now this is super fourth wall breaking, and it's a really fun thing that I think will add so much to the movie. At one point in the trailer, we see him taking the blue pills, and if you look in the mirror, you'll see a much older reflection of him standing there. This makes me think that his age is really going to come into question here, and we'll learn that he's way older than he appears. In the first film, Switch was actually going to be a man in the real world and a woman in the Matrix, and this was going to show that you could really appear in the simulation exactly how you felt you looked. Potentially, this old man could be the way that the world and Neo sees himself, and when he breaks through the simulation, he gets to see his real face. I think by the looks of it that the movie will be tackling mental health themes and highlighting people who question their reality whilst asking if there's any legitimacy to it. Just when I thought I'd finally settled on being Kevin's spoilers, this movie is going to make me question if I actually exist and if there's any point in doing YouTube anymore. Especially with the way I, I pronounce Matrix. Mate, mate, me mate Rick. Now, through, throughout we're going to watch him attend a lot of therapy sessions with a character played by Neil Patrick Harris. This will be known as the Analyst, and he's a super intelligent machine that is responsible for bringing the humans and the AI together. Neo will be called Anderson, a callback to his name in the first film, yes, and he'll also meet Trinity, who is now going under the name Tiffany. Though they don't have breakfast at Tiffany's, eh? The pair do come face to face at a coffee shop. We can see in the trailer that the coffee shop is called Simulate, and it also has the green colour that's associated with the Matrix code. Simulate becomes simulate if you remove one T, and coffee is of course something that wakes you up when you're tired. This is perhaps hinting at how Neo will wake up, or perhaps it's the big reach in the video that you've been waiting for. They're struck with deja vu, and this makes them begin to remember their life beforehand, and deja vu was of course caused by a glitch in the matrix. Right. Now if we look at the rumours, reports, and behind the scenes info, this coffee shop is supposed to be the jumping off point for a big action scene. The analyst is apparently studying Neo, and he's doing this in order to see if Trinity will remember him, as it's at this point that he will become unstoppable. When the pair realise that they do know one another, this will send things spiralling out of control, and there'll be a massive action and chase scene in which they start to work together. This will send them on a quest to uncover the truth about what's really going on, and during this time they'll come across a character called Bugs, played by Jessica Henrik. This movie is meant to open with her being chased by agents, which of course riffs on the first film and how that started up. Yeah, Bugs right. and Morpheus will apparently work together to resurrect Neo so that he can once more be the one. I have no idea why this needs to be done if the humans are cool with the machines, but obviously we need some conflict in the film, so my guess is that there are some rebels amongst the humans that want to rise up. Now lastly, the two big other characters that are returning are apparently the Merovingian and Agent Smith. The former will be played by Lambert Wilson once more, but Hugo Weaving will not be returning as the latter. This is people speculating a lot over who could be betraying the iconic villain, and judging by the trailer, I actually think that it's going to be Jonathan Groff. You might know the actor from Mindhunter and Hamilton, and he definitely has the acting skills to pull off something like Smith. There is a scene in which you can catch the character with his mouth sticking together, and I think it would be great if this was carried out by Neo. Smith, of course, did the same thing to Neo in the first Matrix film, and it would just be a nice little switcheroo. Now, there are theories going around that Neo is actually the creator of this brand new world, but he doesn't know that he built it, 
So it makes a lot of sense that his subconsciousness would pull things into it. This would definitely include Smith, who was of course a big part of the character's life, death, rebirth, other death, and now his resurrection. Now some of the miscellaneous easter eggs include what I initially thought was the Nebuchadnezzar, but shout out Simon A. Berman on Twitter for sending me through that it's actually the Menen, the Menen, the Meneno sign. And now, now this is named after the Greek goddess of memory, which of course ties into the overall theme of the film. We also know that pods will appear in the film, as well as several callbacks to what's come before. There are red and blue pills, and a fight scene in which I believe that Agent Smith punches Neo really fast, which is of course a callback to their fight in the train station from the first movie. Yeah. In, addi in addition to this, the analyst's room also has some easter eggs, including a black cat and a butterfly, which is of course a symbol of rebirth. We see that Bugs also has a white rabbit tattoo, and this was of course white a rabbit. big thing in the first film, that not only linked to Alice in Wonderland, but it also got Neo to meet Trinity. There's also a moment where a gun is held up, and this looks very similar to the dodge this moment. However, right. on top of this, the gun looks very similar to Agent Smith's, and though it's very blurred, that does look like Jonathan Groff. So yeah, Smith confirmed. You might also Could notice be. there is somewhat of a green tint over the top of the trailer, and this of course reflects when someone is in the Matrix, whereas in the real world, the, the colours are more natural. Or they're really blue sometimes. Sometimes it's really blue. Now, whether this is true or not, I have been told that Trinity and Neo both rely on each other in order to unlock their abilities. That's why the pair meeting is so dangerous, and it's also the reason that Neo can't fly when we first see him. There's also a moment where we see code moving down Trinity's face, and this makes me think that they're activating and somewhat unlocking both their powers. Overall, it makes a lot of sense looking at this teaser, and I like the idea of them being somewhat helping the other to grow. Now as for my thoughts on the first look, I tried to think about how I feel about the trailer, but it was only then that I realised the truth that there is no trailer. Now by that I mean there is a trailer obviously, and it's really good in my opinion. Now a question you probably have is did I enjoy the Matrix trilogy, and I'll answer your question by saying that I was in high school when it came out, so yeah I think pretty much every high schooler did, including me. I love the first film, and though I didn't initially like the second and third, over the years I have come to appreciate what they were doing in terms of telling a modern day Jesus Greatest story. Fight they of course have their faults, but whatever they were, they weren't enough to put me off this first trailer, and I am really sold on the film at this point. I love that it's reusing a lot of the previous iconography, and it looks like it's also breaking the fourth wall to make us question our own reality once more. This did a great job of getting me hyped up for the film, and December is going to be an amazing month with both this and Spider-Man No Way Home. Now until then, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the teaser, so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are running a competition right now and giving away three copies of the Zack Snyder DC Trilogy on the 30th of September, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the first look. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of What If Episode 5, which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the whole thing from top to bottom, and it was a hell of a lot of fun, especially with the zombies, so definitely go watch it right after this. If not, then thank you for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace. Alright, well, J-Rock says this. So... Neo erased his own memory. How did he get back into the Matrix? That still remains to be answered. Trinity is going by Tiffany. But then they meet and they begin to remember. Okay. Morpheus originally is dead. But they rebooted the Matrix and now a bootleg Morpheus has come back. Uh-huh. What's up with black folks and bootlegs? Anyway. Um. Agent the Merovingian is back. Lipstick? Lipstick? There's no lipstick. She wasn't kissing your face, my love. Um. So he's back. Agent Smith is not, but they believe. Well, Agent Smith is, but the guy who played him in the previous three movies isn't. So it's a different form of Agent Smith. Wow. Wow. All I can say is I can't wait to see this movie. All right, I got a lot of questions I need to have answered, and um, 
that helped out a little bit but ultimately you're gonna have to watch the actual movie to get your questions answered and i will be doing that okay post your comments down below and let j-rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video no rhyme and turn it on that line if you enjoyed the great one's reaction hit that like button subscribe and share and be sure that you hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified thank you for joining j-rock until next time Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. If you smell how what J Rock is cooking.